morning, good evening, good afternoon to all my blessed beloveds out there in video land. You're watching Living and Thriving with Rusty, and I'm Rusty, and I did a naughty. Yep, horns and all, I did a naughty. As you know, I absolutely love my doTERRA products, and I've been doing the whey, vanilla whey protein shake with fiber. They're fiber, because you get to a certain age, you need a little bit more fiber in your life. And I did a naughty. I actually added chocolate almond milk and now it's just a party in my mouth. It is so good. I can't even tell you how exciting it is. It's like the best dessert without all of the worries and fat and grossness that you can eat with chocolate. Chocolate is my favorite. Now, my third favorite in life, my daughter being my second, chocolate being my first, is my friend Jenny. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. How are you, my love? Good. Chocolate's a love of mine, too. <laughs> yeah, I was gifted by a publisher who I send uh, authors to um, this really delicious white wine, which I don't normally drink white wine, and a coconut chocolate, organic coconut chocolate, and it has little bits yum. and pieces of coconut in it. Oh, yum. Yeah. <laughs> I still have half a bar. I'm really proud of myself. I threw it in the I'm, way I'm back proud of you, there. too. <laughs> I've got 50 pounds to lose. After I had chemo, I stayed 50 pounds heavy and it's been a task. And so I'm trying all these little tricks to shake up my 45 year old metabolism, which seems to have either packed its bags and left or fallen asleep. I swear, or like gone. every year, I'm turning 52 this year. Every year it's like harder to lose and so much easier to put on like 10 pounds in a weekend. <laughs> Well, I was watching this um, sports, sports, fancy sports nutritionist person, and she said that after a certain age, like 35-ish, mm -hmm. your estrogen doesn't process the way it used to, and that's what gives us the belly fat. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, so what do you do? And she said, up your fiber because the fiber actually absorbs the estrogen so that you can release it. The mm -hmm. so, bitch, I'm doing a bag a day. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Lord. Lord. I, I, this, the last time I was this heavy was when I was pregnant. And it's just weird to me. I'm not used to this body. Yeah, I have like 25 pounds and I'm, yeah, I'm feeling the same way. Just like, come on. <laughs> and I'll do like, I'll be good and I'll do like a cleanse or something like that. And five pounds will come off. But then, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's an effort. Yeah. So hopefully my little doTERRA whey protein and yeah, fiber that mixture sounds with yummy. the chocolate almond. Well, you know, because almonds are fiber. They, they, yeah. So Let's absorb that shit and get my skinny bitch back yeah. on. <laughs> it's a great time of year to do it, to do it too, because it's better for walking and doing lots of stuff outside. That's yeah. what I'm really um, upping now. What state are you in again? New York, upstate New York. Okay. So I just traveled through New York uh, a couple of days ago. And I have to tell you, I absolutely love 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 going from north carolina up because it's mm -hmm. just so beautiful it is so beautiful but i absolutely cannot stand the traffic the tolls the taxes yeah yeah, yeah. where are you located Rusty? southern florida like south 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 almost in uh the keys okay yeah we're looking to maybe retire in delaware so a little further south but not super super hot but yeah, more, we still, we, I do love the seasons, Yeah, but I want a shorter winter. I was laughing because when I went up, I swear to God, somebody turned up the heat up there because it was damn hot. Yeah. What the heck? It was and hot now it's chilly. down here. Yeah, now it's chilly. So you never know what you're going to get. Yeah, no, the mood swings. I lived, I lived in New England for a long time and I remember that. It's like, oh, menopause. That's what it's like. Yeah, exactly. Yay. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> so my sweet friend, you have a lot that you've accomplished since the last time we got to talk. And I'm so glad that we're 
able to connect and catch up because you do wonderful work and I'm a huge advocate Thank of yours you. and a big fan. Thank you. Um, but you've done a lot. You've revamped some stuff. You have a new course coming out. So Dish, yeah, talk to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my new site, the main theme is self-love. I've really had to dive into, I've been teaching self-love for like 15 years, but losing my mom really made me look at it a different way because she was my biggest cheerleader. I talked to her every morning for you know 51 years so it was very challenging to yeah i mean dive deep into become even a bigger advocate of myself and find that self-love and encouragement and what was kind of born from that and that transformation is love 365 which is an app you could get on your phone and it's about receiving every day a couple of words a couple of paragraphs i tend to be a little verbose when i talk about things i'm passionate about <laughs> a couple of paragraphs and exercise and affirmation on self-love so it begins with the free gift is love through the chakras so we go through each and every chakra well the main ones one through seven and learn about a little about each because it is our inner diagnostic system way of connecting to our body way of really showing our body love and bringing it back into balance i give affirmations and then the last day of the free uh free gift is a meditation where i actually use my uh, music of the plants machine so i connect with the plant that's playing my mom's plant that's playing music in the background as i lead a guided meditation through the chakras i so, love it look at you miss fancy you. pants Thank you. I know a friend who has her own app. Nah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank so how, how did you even, like, did you have to hire somebody to sign yes. an app? Oh, or yeah. Or oh, just... yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's, I was in, you know, crazy grief. I really I was. Were. I knew that I needed to, you know, a lot was going to transform. I knew that the last couple of years looking at my website, even I was like, it doesn't feel like me. It feels like I've added, oh, she took this course. Now she's adding this and she took this course. Now she's adding that. It didn't feel like a comprehensive version of me. And so I went to, you know, someone who's brilliant at that. I was like, I need a new brand. I need a new website. I need a new way to work. I'm turning 52 this year. I want to, you know, work simpler. I want to affect more people in a smarter way. Uh, instead of doing so many one-on-ones and being exhausted, I really want to use my energy in the best way to help the most people. And she and I together, you know, came up with that idea, Love 365. And it just, I love to write. I love to help people. I love to give easy tools. So it just seemed like such a beautiful fit. And changing the way I work too, where I'm not just listening to someone for an hour, but every session is, is a little bit of listening and then a little bit of energy, whether that's shamanic or Akashic or other energy or whatever it is, whatever is intuitively coming through for them or me. Um, but to be really shift on that mind level but also that energetic level and it just feels a lot more aligned my word for this year has been alignment so it feels like that has really shown up as you know that's not always in you know easy ways sometimes it's what do you need to move out of your life for that to show up you know i have transitioned through a few friendships and stuff too and the people around me that have showed up have gotten closer uh and yeah this last you know, year and a half for everyone was very transformative. I think that was such a huge shift. And for myself personally, as you know, because um, we do have some personal connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even though we're busy. Um, it's been a huge shift. I've really set some good boundaries and lines in the sand and uh, an awareness of my goals, drive, purpose, and wants which is so bizarre because I, I am, I lived the majority of my life in a world in which my wants were always last. Yes. And yeah. I would feel guilty if I satisfied that, you know, satiated that, that want, whatever the want was, even as simple yeah. as my, my favorite pair of shorts. And, um, I, I shifted all of that and I, and I have beautiful people that are showing up in my life. They're absolutely wonderful, beautiful people, but they're just not people I can connect with. We're, we're different. We're on different levels. Mm -hmm. And, and I, 
I'm trying to find balance with that in, in, a, in a way that is gentle to them. Mm -hmm. um, and it's just been an interesting shift. I've absolutely loved this time period. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's been so peaceful. Mm -hmm. um, and now that we're getting back to normal, whatever that means mm -hmm. to, to each person, it, it's very bizarre. My trip down from New England a couple of days ago, nothing but car accidents and dead people. And it was really eye-opening because I've done this trip a few times during Rona and during the riots. I drove right through the oh. riots. Mm -hmm. And that was less stressful than the trip that I just took wow. because people are out about and they're spinning. <laughs> yeah. mm, that's a great yeah. way. Yeah. Spinning. Yeah. It's wild, wild energy. Yeah. And your, your story is so common, Rusty, with you're a woman and you're a mom. Like those two make us feel like, oh, everyone else is first. Yeah. So it is so good to hear you. Yeah. Asserting those boundaries because we do teach people how to treat us. And if we let people take advantage of us or ask us for things a hundred times, like they're not going to stop unless we say, you know what, that's not working for me anymore, you know, in a loving way, because we have helped to establish these patterns. But people are all spinning right now. And it is really important when we do kind of assert those boundaries to know that that person's probably going through a heck of a lot too. Yeah. So, and it's always, you know, always do things gently and lovingly and in, in, in a place and that you're authentic, but you're not cool. Right. Um, but the shifting of friendships, I can totally feel you on yeah. that because it's like, oh, okay, well, that season's passed. Yeah, and that, that has been generally my hardest thing in moving forward because I get very nostalgic and attached to people and always see the best in people too. You know, always know that that person can, you know, be that highest version of themselves and see that in my mind's eye. But then as we're advancing too, like we just know it's not trying to be discerning and not judgmental. Like, hey, this isn't working for us right now and if I'm going to show up not a hundred percent for you like with thoughts in my head of this isn't working like that's not serving you either totally, you know? totally. Yeah. and I know that there are gentle ways of doing it and I know that you kind of have to back away and and lessen that time but larger you know you and I are healers we we are here for a purpose of healing and raising vibration and doing God's work, the universe's work, however somebody wants to articulate that information. Um, and I think it's harder for us not to have those attachments and to remain in a stoic mindset um, when we are nothing but love. We permeate love and we permeate that purpose-driven spiritual essence. And like moths to a flame, <laughs> we also attract those who want to suck that away from us and and yes. so learning to find find that balance between being a lover of life and the universe and consciousness as well as remaining stoic and unattached is is very difficult for some people to accept because they're so needy yeah and that's where my line I'm done, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I mean, friendships, they go back and forth with needs and stuff like that with, okay, yeah, now this person, I'm like 80% and they're 20%, but it's going to shift back. But it's the ones that stay like that. The ones that, you know, you've been saying the same advice for, you know, putting out that example and nothing changes. It's almost like they can't get out of their own way and it's not up to us to lead them really it's up to them to decide when it's time and i do believe in divine perfect order like i know that i was sick for seven years and when i healed i was like ah, oh, i just wasted seven years of my life i should have known this before but no it was perfect timing you know and if i wasn't sick for so long maybe i wouldn't have been so inspired to help other people well and i, I was talking to another guest about something very similar to that. And um, I don't think that I would be doing this show or my podcast or my blogs or any of that if I didn't go through the trauma that I went through. 
Yeah. Um, and it's about perspective and it's about showing up the way you want to show up. And mm -hmm. I, you know, I'm really good at, about looking at myself and saying, bitch, how are you showing up today? <laughs> yeah. Gonna be grumpy. Okay. Yeah. You know, or you're going to be happy or you're going to be silly or, you know, who are you today? Mm -hmm. Because that's the reality each day that we are privileged and it is a privilege yeah. to wake up. We are offered another opportunity to be a better version of ourselves. And in that better version, we should, could, might want to consider how we're showing up in that moment. And it's really interesting as you get better and better with that type of inner work, mm -hmm. how, the old versions of you just start fading away. Yeah. Yeah. It's giving yourself that permission to be a hundred percent authentic. And it is, it's interesting on the spiritual journey because we can become very judgmental of ourselves. Oh, I know better. I've been through this, you know, really these same thought patterns, but once we just give ourselves permission to either sink into it. Yeah. And you know what? I feel kind of bitchy today <laughs> that's that's okay maybe i'll look at what it is maybe i won't you know <laughs> like, but for the next few hours i'm just gonna be in it we're meant to process our emotions we're not meant to be like oh oh i'm feeling uncomfortable let me just do happy affirmations until i'm better and ignore the problem or ignore how i'm feeling it is meant to guide us and the more we do just get present like you said just bring ourselves to the present moment how am I feeling? <laughs> you know, and be able to laugh at ourselves a little bit. I roll my eyes at myself an awful lot, you know, and I'm like, ah, oh, there's that human again. It's all right, you know. <laughs> and you know, also putting my attention on joy really helps. I really do have integrated that a lot this last year, especially because I was in such grief. It's like, how can I bring in a little bit of joy today? And that's so important too, especially now with everything spinning to show the universe yeah we want to be here you know what there are these moments of joy still I'm not, i don't have to be in this downward spiral all the time or let every single thing affect me too because there's so much out there there's so many distractions there's you know like you said even on the car ride to see all those accidents you could have let that spin you into you know oblivion and just concentrated on that but it is really that present moment pulling ourselves back to okay what am I doing for myself to get through the day? And how am I nurturing myself? And where's my joy? And am I being kind to myself? Because then that enables us to show up for other people. I think that there's a lot of things that are missing in people's life. Um, one is humor. I have a wicked sense of humor. I know you do. I love your <laughs> posts every morning. <laughs> I, I look forward to them. Humor. And, and, there are people that are off put by that and it, it makes it funnier to me <laughs> because I'm coming from a place of being jovial. And yeah. I think that the thing that we love about babies and puppies is that they're just so funny. Yeah. Right. And whenever I'm in a pissy mood, I throw on a comedy or I throw on dirty jokes mm -hmm. or I love your English humor absolutely love oh me too we watch so many english shows yeah <laughs> I mean, they're just they're just perfect for me um but it it resets the attitude problem and i will be the first to admit who i am i love myself my flaws my dimples my chubbiness all of it mm -hmm. but I, it took me a long time to get there yeah. the largest thing is learning to reset mm -hmm. your bullshit because you're human, you're flawed, you're uh, a hypocrite, yep. and you're a sack of water floating on a big rock without a steering wheel. <laughs> <laughs> like there's, just call it what it is. Right. Um, and we, we, turn, we tend to self-sabotage. We tend to do that all the time. So being kind to ourselves when that stuff comes up that wants to make us revert to that behavior, or that self-talk or whatever it is that isn't going to serve us, like because we're triggered noticing why we're triggered loving why we're triggered it's part of who we are it's okay yeah and and i'll look at myself and i think everybody should and say oh you're an asshole today <laughs> you know because i can be 
and, mm -hmm. and I think we all can be. Yeah. Um, I read a book, read, I did a book on tape, um, and he was talking about no longer being part of the CIA. You like this. Mm -hmm. C being criticizing, I being interrupting, and A, advising without permission. Mm, I do like that a lot. Uh, yeah. See, I get goosebumps every time I say it. <laughs> yeah. This is my new moto, right? Yeah. I'm no longer a part of the CIA. And yeah. if, you, if you were to write it down and hold on to that throughout your journey just for this week alone, yeah. and recognize when you're criticizing, recognizing when you're interrupting, and recognizing when you're giving advice without permission, meaning nobody asked you for your advice. <laughs> what? Everybody wants me to tell them something. No, shut up. <laughs> Made it a very quiet week. Yeah. <laughs> I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, I love that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So where do we find more information about you? Because we're kind of oh, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, on my website, jennymannion.com, J-E-N-N-Y-M-A-N-N-I-O-N.com. You could sign up for the free nine-day journey through the chakras and have lots of other offerings. And yeah, just love to help other people. And that really is it. I like to hold the mirror for other people so they can see how beautiful they are. That really is it. That, that reawakening because we all know at soul level we all know it but just that little gentle reminding of everyone has their gifts everyone is meant to do amazing things in different ways that's, that's what makes us all so great concentrating you know on the differences in a loving way it's so beautiful that we're all different instead of you know criticizing that or judging that i love that we're all different i love that there's a million different spiritual teachers teaching things from different perspectives because there's so many different people, you're only going to resonate with a couple. And that's huge. I always say that I can give one sentence to five different people and have them read in front of an audience that same sentence. And part of the audience will go to this person, part of the audience will go to this person, you know, and they'll resonate with one of the five people, but they're not going to resonate with all five Absolutely. people. Absolutely. And it's really a powerful thought when you look at yourself as a human being mm -hmm. on this planet, swirling and spinning yeah. <laughs> and in the chaos and the confusion and you're sitting there going, mm -hmm. but if you look at the fact that there are so many tools, so many resources, so yeah. many beautiful people on this planet that can aid, guide and advise in a way that you resonate with. Mm -hmm. We all should be all freaking happy. I know. <laughs> I know. All the tools are there. They're waiting. They're, wait they're waiting for us to be kind enough to ourselves to feel like we deserve those things, though, too. I mean, the self-worth thing, those stories, the limiting beliefs, they run deep. Really, that true believing that we deserve it. You deserve the healthy relationship and healthy body and healthy relationships all around you and healthy career. A lot of people, we are self-sabotaging. We don't believe. You know, it's so, almost like the other shoe's going to drop. Oh, no, this is going well. That means something else is going to be crappy. You know, like not that belief that everything can be really good. And knowing we deserve it. Not feeling guilty saying to our friends, I feel fantastic. <laughs> yeah, my life is great. <laughs> yeah, you know, usually people are like, ah, oh, this sucks. This happened. And but we don't have to commiserate. Like we can actually own that our life is good. And I feel like that helps inspire other people. I love it when people are like, Rusty, how are you? And I'm going, well, I'm doing fantastic. I'm living the life of my dreams. And even if I wasn't, you wouldn't listen anyway. <laughs> and that's the truth. You know, there's a segment of people who will want to commiserate and be in that drama llama. Mm -hmm. And then there's a segment of people who are like, <laughs> that's fantastic. I'm so sad. I'm so excited. Yeah. And yeah. if you just get good with the fact that you have ups and downs, ins and outs, yeah. you're going to be grumpy. You're going to be happy. You're going to be this. You're going to be that. And just live the life that you have available to you to the best ability that you can and not right. get sucked into the drama. God, things are so much easier. Like, I <laughs> So I, feel like, I feel like I lost wrinkles 
when I got out of my marriage because I'm not in drama anymore. It's yeah. not perpetual drama. Mm -hmm. And um, if you really just get honest with yourself and say, shit happens, I'm going to be overdue somewhere. I'm going to, you know, have a flat tire someday. This is part of the process of yeah. life. And I can either make fun of it, laugh at myself. Mm -hmm. As my birth mother used to say, my eyeballs are going to get stuck in the back of my head because I'm rolling. <laughs> <laughs> my dad used to say that to me. There was a while I was paranoid. Not anymore. I'm pretty good. It's 45 years of rolling, so we're good. <laughs> yes, I see a lot of similarities between us, Rusty. <laughs> well, you got to be feisty, you know? Yeah. Feisty. You got to be a little scrappy. Yeah. So my friend, talk to us a little bit more about your app. We have about five minutes left and I, and I, I love our time together when we get it, which is rare because we're two ships passing in the night, but yeah. I'm so proud of you. And I'm Thank so you. grateful that you're coming out of that grief because I remember when your mom passed and it was really, really it tough. Very intense. Yeah. And being her sole caregiver for nine months previously to, and seeing that deterioration. Yeah. Not, you know, very, very sad, but I am grateful I had that time with her too. We really did talk through, I mean, she was my best friend anyway, but we talked through a lot of stuff. She opened up about stuff she had never told me. So it was a beautiful opportunity to, you know, and to witness someone passes, you know, <laughs> carries a lot of emotions, but with my beliefs too, I believe she's in a better place. She's in a happy place, which helps a lot. But my app is, yeah, you go to my website, you can sign up for the free nine days. It's really easy. It's Love365. And each day you will get, there are different topics on self-love. I have a week on boundaries, you know, how to lovingly set boundaries. There are, you know, there are weeks and then there are day things. And what I love is giving people easy tools. We don't have time to meditate for hours a day. No one has time for that. But it really is. I didn't heal myself by doing that. I healed myself physically by those little moments of time, the shower, driving somewhere. You know, where can you put in those moments of talking to yourself? And this will give you an easy exercise. Even if you're like, I don't have time to do an exercise, then repeat that affirmation that you get daily these little tools can work, whether you're doing the whole thing, you know, reading my few paragraphs and the exercise and the affirmation, or just picking out a piece. And some things you're going to meet a lot of resistance with, because, and those things maybe you should go back to a couple times, <laughs> because we all have our stuff. And throughout the whole year, you know, when you're doing Love 365, there might be things that you're not ready to tackle right then, but you can go back to them. And look at them again and then there are going to be exercises that you keep carrying forward there's a week on forgiveness and self-forgiveness that's a big one i still say ho'oponopono almost every day i mean there are going to be exercises that you keep and then exercises to just process and let go of stuff but doing a self-love practice even if you make five of the seven days that you're getting stuff it's going to change change things in your life because when we do love ourselves as you were saying the flaws and all you know dense bumps whatever it makes us feel worthy of creating the life that we deserve and that is what you know we've both been going about doing in our healing process i know i'm never gonna arrive anywhere there's nowhere to arrive you know but i know my life is a whole lot easier every single day i know that i'm in love with my life and the people in it and that's it's powerful and what i do every day you know, what I do for a living and helping people. There's, there's nothing that brings me more joy, but I do also make sure like I have time with my friends and walking. And when you love yourself, you give yourself that permission to really live the life that you're meant to live from your heart, from your soul, and maybe letting go of the brain a little bit <laughs> or training the brain in a better way. I love the fact that you said resistance because don't we do a lot of that? Oh, yeah. My God, I'm so resistant. Like, I'm such a brat. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't matter if it's a welcome change. We're still resistant to that, too. Everything. So, again, like, being our best friend, being loving and kind to ourselves, because 
if we're pushing, that's not good. Then the self-sabotage comes up. It is in like letting go and trusting, but all of those words, like they still, I've, I've been saying these words for 15 years and they can still make me like cringe a little bit. <laughs> and letting go is easier said than done when there's something we've been holding on to so tightly. I love it. So resistance, I have to tell everybody because I am a true brat. I resist as much as possible. It's just my nature. I was born that way. I resisted coming out. My birth mother can tell you all about that. Um, but resistance is a perfect and beautiful thing because it means you're almost there. When you start feeling uncomfortable and you start getting pissy about change, <laughs> that means that there's some awareness that change has to happen. Yeah. And that resistance and that pissiness is a beautiful cathartic moment if you look at it honestly and truthfully and say oh okay now i get it this is why i'm uncomfortable this is why i'm pissy this is why because i do have to make this change yeah and the universe conspires against you it knows way more than you do <laughs> but when we let go and trust it is amazing how the universe will rise up to provide all the synchronicities and connections, but it's getting out of our own way. That's pretty hard sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it's a journey. It's fine. Laugh along the way. We'll get there. <laughs> right. And, but it's, it's fun when you decide that this is what it is. Yeah. And you true. have to get there. And what I, what I found, and I don't know about you, is that the more honest I am with the journey, yeah. even the shit parts, mm -hmm. the better people I have in my life. Like I have you in my life. I could not be more grateful. You are a beautiful soul. And mm -hmm. I've watched you over the years and, and we've interconnected when we can. And I feel really blessed because I'm able to now have people in my life that resonate with my higher purpose, which is kind of selfish, I guess, saying it that way. Um, but I don't think so, though, Rusty, because we do, there's that Jim Rohn quote, we become like the top five people we spend the most time around. That is important. It's important. We want to be around that energy that lifts us up and that makes us feel good and inspired, and happy and joyous and, and introspective and <laughs> like all of those things. Yeah, I got to spend uh, some time with a good friend of mine. She's a shaman and uh, she is one of the few relationships that I have in my life where it's completely and totally unconditional. There's no conditions, there's no criticism, there's no judgment. And I love that. And I want more, more of that in my life because I can just show up and I don't have any of that fear-based stuff. Mm -hmm. Those triggers, you know, and those are amazingly healthy great relationships to have and i hope that i'm that friend as well you know yeah i know you are <laughs> i know you are just that awareness around it too and you know we both experience unconditional unconditional love and knowing that difference is huge and that is that has been an intention too i mean my mom represented the biggest love she had the biggest heart of anyone i knew i'm like I have no patience for someone that is not resonating love right now. Like right, exactly. I need that love. I want people yeah. that want to be walking in that love and not fear. And that is, that is what I'm calling to me. That is what I want to bring to other people to see, to have them find it in themselves because we all do have that. We all have that unconditional love within us. We Just do. might be very buried. <laughs> Uh, I love you, Jenny, and I hope I you love come you. on again. You are just such a beautiful soul. Thank you. Jenny Mann is in the house. <laughs> I feel the Riding. same about you, Rusty. Thank you. I'm so excited, but don't hang up because I want to ask you a little bit, a couple more questions. Absolutely. Um, so you're watching Living and Thriving with Rusty. These are my friends. These are people who are path pavers. Say that one after a couple of <laughs> Um, and 
they're doing things to better the world because they've already walked that path and sometimes are currently walking that path, but their vision is large and they can see how much a little bit of help is good. And so go check out her website. You can actually find her website on my website because I still have her on mine because I believe in what she does. And I think everybody should have a little dose of Jenny. And now you, she has an app, nine days for free. Shoot, hook that up, <laughs> download. Anyway, know that you're loved, know that you're beautiful. And I can't believe this is what I get to do. I just, I love this. And I'm so glad that you guys support me through this journey. Our, the, the YouTube channel rose 123%. What? And I'm a little person. So this time next year, who knows? But I'm ready to ride. I'm ready to cruise. We got this. You got this. Keep watching. Keep hitting that bell, the subscribe button, wherever that is in relationship to the screen. I never know. Do something kind for somebody else. Until next time.